still original Ford Motor Company Persia Citroen even though it's made by Gates and it just comes out so I'll change the gloves and then I'll, um, I'll wipe all the pulleys down a bit Ooh, slightly damaged yeah but it's for my own I like it because you have to literally feed that's it almost and now this pin goes in just like that nice and easy all right just top up with the antifreeze this is already mixed up and then you've got a bleed screw just there uh, hi and welcome to the channel um Blonnie and um i know i've got a t-shirt that says completely different from there but don't ignore that that's my old job so it's just a good old t-shirt that's all it is um but yeah, today we're doing the cam belt change on this transit connect and it's one point, technically speaking, is 1.56 engine size diesel. So some people say it's 1.5, some people say it's 1.6, but it's all the same thing. So this engine you can see it's found the same on the Ford Focuses, Ford Transit Connect and some other Fords. But Today is the 2015 Transit Connect we're working on. You can take the wheel off to make it easier, but I don't because it's just extra work for no reason. So I can just turn the steering all the way to the right and then uh, you've got plenty of access then. But I still will have to take under trays off and then move wheel arch out of the way. You can take the wheel arch out of the way completely, take it off the vehicle to make it easier, but I don't need to. I can just remove it, move it slightly to the side and then that's it. Right, let's put the axle stand. Torx 30. Under, undo the under tray. You can do with a ratchet and a spanner or wherever, but I prefer a little gun. So much quicker and easier. Right now the wheel arch. Another torque 30, but this little plastic poppers I'll get this. I'll get the tool. Right, got my special tool. It's a, it's quite simple, very cheap, but it's very effective to remove all them clips. Just to pull the middle bit out, which you'll have to make your way underneath and then just pull it. And just simple like that. There's a couple underneath as well. That's it. Now let's get one here. Even one. That's it. There's one here. Might as well take that off as well. And that's out. It's very, very similar. This transit can connect similar to Focus. Very similar setup. More or less the same. And that's enough for me to get underneath to, 
to see a crankshaft pulley. You pull the rubber, rubber protector off the crank pulley, so you expose this 18 mil bolt that we'll have to undo in a minute, but not yet. Right, but I've got enough room now. I mean, you can't take all of that off, take that all off, so you can do everything, but it just saves time not to take everything off. Right, next thing, I'm gonna jack the engine up, but I don't like putting jacks straight under the sump, so I'm gonna have to put a block of wood on top so it doesn't damage the sump. So I'll get a block of wood. This block of wood been through the walls. Oh, especially on these engines because it's got the plastic sump. So you definitely don't want to put jack under the this sump because it will just crack it. Put a bit of tension on and now we're ready to strip bits under the bonnet. Right, I'll move this brake reservoir, flat brake fluid reservoir out of the way. Just undo them two bolts, move it to the side. Then I can take the uh, coolant expansion tank off and then uh, move it to the side also. We do need to drain the coolant still, but we'll just do one bit at a time. Torx 25. Tuck it under there, it's out of the way. I like to unclip these pipes so they're out of my way as well. They're not going to be out of the way, but at least you can move them a bit then. Right, this expansion tank is literally just clips down, there's no screws. And it's not very easy to remove it but when you do it don't don't snap these pipes because it's only very thin plastic pipe it's a full coolant return pipe but it's very very flimsy plastic easily breakable I mean to ease up we could take the headlamp out but I'll try to do it without it. Yeah. Let's take it off. So I don't damage it. And that's it. I'll move it to the side for now. Now we just need to take the engine mount off. Normal 15 mil and 18 mil socket. But because it's in such a deep corner, I'll have to put some wobbly extension on it. Let's then do 15 mil first. You can do it with a ratchet. Why do you need to use manual tools if you've got power tools? That was tight. It's a bit rusty. Right, I can go back for a minute. Now we get 18 mil. Do the same with these two. Oops. 
drop that. And that's the engine mount. Pull back. Right, next. There's a Torx 30 little bolt, takes that little plastic cover off. It's only a little bracket that needs to come off. The only reason we need to take that off because there's actually a bolt behind it. I tried to take this off, but recently I haven't really been successful with them. They always break them little clips. Hey, that's come out. That's good. That can be unplugged. The sensor can be unplugged. What I found is easier. I just use a little screwdriver. Because you meant to push them from behind, but I can just see the yellow tab. I just put put a little screwdriver underneath it, lift it a bit, and it just pops off. Much quicker and easier. And just like that, comes off so much easier than to do it properly. Take this off. Right, seven mil. We've got four, like a self-tapping sort of screws in there. Yeah, you don't need to take them right out. They stay with the cover. And you just wiggle it out. And that's the top cover off. That's where the bolts are. That, that, that. And that's the bolt that's covered by this little bracket. Now you can see the cam belt now. And that hole that's your timing hole and that's supposed to line up with a hole in the head which is which just sits on about I don't know one o'clock roughly maybe two o'clock position so that needs to go all the way 180 degrees basically to get to the timing well I won't worry about it just yet I'll, uh, I'll loosen up this bracket it's got a four 16 mil head bolts just so I'll just take them off now. Sometimes with them bolts, you can't normally see them, you can just go by feel, but you can feel them quite easily. Unless you use some sort of a mirror, then you can see them. bolts out, wiggle it, but it won't come off until the bottom cover is off. Well, I'm gonna uh, detension the belt tensioner now. You just use 15 mil open-ended spanner, literally pull it back and put the pin in it so the tensioner stays spring-loaded, you know, but it's off so the belt will be easy to remove and put it back on. I'm talking about the auxiliary belt. All right, let's do that. Just use then your pin. Use your drill bit if you want to. And just pull it back and pop that in a hole. And that's it. Simple as that. 
Now there's 10 mil, three bolts. You are going to remove? Yeah, I'm gonna take them three bolts to remove the tension off the car. I mean, the belts are still attached, but I jacked the engine up a bit, so it's a bit easier to access it. And the last bolt, you can see them bolts very easily, so the tensioner auxiliary drive belt tensioner so you don't muddle up just pull pop the bolts back in the hole so at least you know which bolt goes where I mean they're the same bolts but so you don't mix them with the other bolts and the belt it literally just comes off just like that nice and easily That's the auxiliary drive belt. You can see it's like full of cracks. So it's not really good condition at all. Mm. All right. All right, next, it's um, we're gonna turn the engine until this timing mark will line up with the hole in the head and then uh, put the pin in it. So I'm gonna just turn the engine via this 18 mil crank bolt. No, a bit more. Yeah. Let's get the yeah. pin. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so there's a pin for it. You turn a slightly bit more. an 8 mil pin so you potentially could just use a normal drill bit but if you use a drill bit you know just uh, put some tape around the end of the end of the tape you know drill bit so you don't actually cut your fingers on the sharp edges of the drill bit that's yeah. a good tip yeah yeah it's all right when you know what you're doing but if you don't do it then you'll cut your fingers in no time Right now, I can then do the crank pulley. This 18 volt bolt. Drop the 
down a bit now. Crank pulley just comes off just like that. I've never had, never known them see to seize up. So generally they come out quite easy. Next is to undo the bottom belt cover. He's got a five five seven mil bolts, and the one of the wires for the crankshaft position sends up clips onto the cover so you have to use this tool to take pull them off right let's try to undo them seven mil right again they don't come out stays in the cover That's off. Unclip this. Oh, that, that's come out quite easily. Oh yeah, there is a wire tucked in the, right at the right at the end. Again, you have to unclip it just there. out like that too there's two wires oh, that's out now this cover can just go down And just to, for ease of demonstration, there the bolts one, two, three, four, five. Wire goes there, and then two other wires clip into this side up there. They're the awkward ones to get to. Uh, I had it before where they actually the cover breaks around here, where it just doesn't come out too well. You can see the, the bit of an oil leak somewhere, so the cover isn't very clean. And now we can take this engine mount off, well, the side mount off, the one that I'm done earlier. Because this one's got lip on this side and uh, lips on this side. So this actually comes out last, the plastic cover sits against it. So if you put the covers in first, then you'll have to tuck that behind them. So you need to take that, you know, put that in first and take it out last. Okay, well that's out. Now, the cam belt is exposed. I know it's got the wires going across, but they, I mean, they, they're inconvenient, but not the end of the world. I've had worse. So the top pin is in. Now the lower, the pin, you've got a little hole in a bottom sprocket. You, all the holes are elongated apart from one one is round and that that hole lines up with the it's literally at Can 12 degrees is it 12 degrees it's right there the top round one yeah top round is literally at six at 12 o'clock and right. there's a hole in a block behind it that lines up with this hole yeah they're all oval shape no and the old all other holes are like a the slanted shape mm -hmm. so it's only one that round so you can't really mix it up right. right so i can put the pin in through that hole as well i'll just use a normal drill bit literally Ooh. 
and from the top it goes in and now that's more or less engine timed up still now there is another hole where the fuel pump is at, at about three o'clock position up there there's another hole you can put pin in there I mean that's drilled a bit too small but so it just basically locates it locates there and now I can take the cam belt off that's it there's the tensioner just 13 mil bolt slacking that off and take it off All right And that's your tensioner. Up here, you've got a little slot. You've got a, you've got like a little stump sticking out on the block that needs to line up with this hole. So when you put it back, but I'll show that later when I'm putting it all back together. Well, that's the old tensioner the belt. Literally just un, undo it. That's when you're going to be struggling around all these pipes and wires and whatever all the pins sticking out on the way and the, one more thing you need to undo is a crankshaft position sensor because that's actually blocking the, the well you don't it's blocking the basic belt from coming out so it's eight mil bolt Let's get this off. Let's undo that. Don't have to unplug it, just tuck it out of the way. And now the belt can come off. That is a cam belt. As you can see, it's still original. Ford Motor Company Persia Citroen, even though it's made by Gates. So, but you've got the Citroen Persia and Ford stamps on it. Okay. Now, because we're buying a whole kit, that idler pulley needs to come off. 16 mil, 16 mil uh, nut that can come off. That's your idler. Don't need that anymore either. Now we can see the water pump now. And that's the that's the little lump I was talking about up here where my finger is. Ooh, there. And that's where the, the tensioner that's where the tensioner sits in into this slot over that lump right now you can well you obviously could have drained the coolant before but i like doing that because i'm changing the coolant so i just uh, put a bucket of underneath and then do the water pump and all the coolant needs to come off they're gonna come out through the water pump okay Right. I'm just gonna take the fuel pump off. Got a whole bunch of eight mil bolts. Just take fuel pump? Well, water pump. Uh 
you can see I've took all the timing pins out so it's not on my way and I want to rub my fingers to, to shreds and rip them to shreds this one is a bit tight normally so you need to pick it a bit and then all it comes out it comes off quite easily you just need to give a bit of a from underneath <laughs> and this comes out pull it straight in the bucket and that's all off next we're gonna put the new bits on Right, got new kit, gates just like original, it just doesn't have a Ford badge on it, that's all, but it's still made by the same company. Obviously we've that's got why the price difference. That's why the price difference, just because it hasn't got a Ford badge on it, but it's the same thing, made at the same factory, by the same company. Ooh slightly damaged gasket right little tip on this water pump do not use silicon because if you do they'll invalidate your warranty if something goes wrong and also you can see on this gasket they've got like a triangle holes there for your locating bolts so if you use your water pump bolt you literally put them in first just like a one water pump bolt you literally put them in first just like a one thread or maybe two threads so they're actually in a little bit you feel like you're cutting new thread in it but that's how it's supposed to be but now the gasket sits there squarely where it's supposed to be not gonna fall off not gonna break or anything and that's it and uh, you can put the pump back on. You want to clean around that area? Or? You could, if you would be dirty, but I can see it's clean as a whistle up there. So it's no point. I mean, sometimes... Scenario, no need to yeah, clean that part. Yeah, yeah, if it's... Um, sometimes if it's rusty or somebody used silicon at some point in its life, then yeah, you have to make sure there's no silicon there. But yeah, I found there's no need for cleaning because it's clean. Because nobody used anything before. You can always first can belt. There's actually a tightening sequence for these bolts. I really don't understand the reason for it, but there is. There's a sequence you have to tighten the bolts in, and the torque, you can Google it, but I normally do by eye, I never got it wrong, but then, then the torque is not, not really tight. It's something along those lines, like 15 Newton meters, that's it, you know. I'm not but sure. better to google that one yeah yeah, yeah. Sure. i'm yeah. not sure on that one yeah, i'll do the rest from underneath it's easier to get to good well that's the water pump is on now we can put the idler idler pulley now they're putting cable ties on it just to so you can just use it and return it I don't think it makes a difference which way around you're putting it back but the nice thing actually metal not plastic
Right. Let's idle it on. Extensioner. Don't need that anymore. They come with a pin inserted in them. Leave that pin in, don't take it out. You'll thank me later. <laughs> it makes the belt, the installation of a belt so much easier with that pin in. You're probably filming from underneath to see where that pin gone in into that slot on the tensioner. There, that's it. That's the one. You can see that pin gone into the slot of the tensioner. Just there. Right, next, we can put the belt on. Oh no, I'm gonna put the timing pins back in. That's one. That's one for That's the two. fuel pump. That's a fuel pump at the top. Yeah, so I know the slot is quite big on the, by the fuel pump, but it always sits in that sort of position, but as long as the pulleys don't move, that's all it that matters. Right, now we can put the belt on. Now we need to put the belt on, but before I do that, I don't really want to handle the belt with dirty gloves. So I'll change the gloves and then I'll, um, I'll wipe all the pulleys down a bit. Right, wipe it down a bit here. Right, on this vehicle, that bottom pulley's got the pickup ring for the crankshaft. It's magnetic, so, and it's like covered in some sort of plasticky sort of a material it can be quite easily damaged if you hit it or or scratch it with a screwdriver or something so don't damage it otherwise your car van won't start or drive anymore so that that needs to be kept quite clean and uh, so I wiped it down with a clean tissue so now it's a it's because it's magnetic so it obviously picks up some dust particles that are magnetic, you know, some metal swarf. So wipe it off. And then, uh, and that's it. And now you can try to put the belt back on. There's a new belt. It's not directional, but it's for my own. I like it so I can actually read it. <laughs> read it. So I normally put it this way around, but it makes no really difference. On some vehicles, see, they are directional, so you have and, to. Uh, yeah, it's an arrow also. Yeah, there, there will be an arrow drawn on the belt. But on this one, it doesn't have it, so you start from the bottom because you have to literally feed underneath of that pickup ring. Right. That's in. And just hook it there, hook it here. It needs to go around the water pump, but behind the tensioner. So this one, it goes behind the idler pulley. It needs to go behind the wires. I mean, it's awkward, but it's a lot easier than removing all the wires off and pipes off. Leave them on and just work around it. Yeah. Let's find a fuel pump there, that way. Obviously it's not permanently yet. But up here, this side on the right hand side, you need to put some sort of a 
tension so you cannot leave this and and hook it on the bottom teeth you cannot leave it slack up this end because this 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 bit hasn't got the tensioner so you shouldn't have any slack so that's why you start with this end and then feed the belt around the top sprocket obviously you don't want to any of that behind but because you've got that pin in so this tension is proper slack at the moment and, and that's what gives you a lot of slack on the belt and helps you to slide the belt on and if you wouldn't have that pin in that belt would be very tight all right you can see that's still in the middle where it's supposed to be. That's pushed on. That's on. And that's it. That's the belt on. And now, make sure that pin's still kind of... Yeah, that's good. That's still good. That's still good. And now you can pull the pin out. You don't want to tighten the tension, are you? Sorry? You don't want to the no, 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 you pull the pin out and now you tension it. You pull the pin out and then you turn the tensioner counterclockwise and then um, until you'll see a little hole lines up with this slot. Which little hole? Uh, you will see that in a minute. You can't see it at the moment, it's hiding. You need a six mil Allen key and the 13 mil spanner. It's a ghost clock, anti clock. Right. It's easier to do it with a mirror or from underneath. You can see a little hole where the actually time it, where this little tension the pin was going through. That's the hole. This should be in the middle. Yeah, so that's it. Right. Now, pull the, pull the pins out. And put the old ball back in, just literally finger tight. And turn the engine, complete two revolutions. All right, 18 mil. And turn the engine, two revolutions. Just make sure the timing is correct. Two. Two. Because the bottom the turns. Two or top one thing. No, top bottom two. Well, so the two. the top one only does the rev one revolution because wow. four stroke engines. So obviously you've got the crankshaft t turns twice as fast as the camshaft. So that's why once you do two revolutions. <laughs> Almost there, so I'm gonna get my pin.
and line up the bottom first and hopefully then the top will line up itself as well can see the hole mm -hmm. ah, there it needs to go you see the bottom pin is slightly on the angle so make it straight so we need to go forward just a bit, a bit more that's it almost and now this pin goes in just like that, nice and easy. Yeah, you need it. See, easy. That's in. The bottom is straight. Now let's see the fuel pump also. There it is. That goes in as well, and it sits like closer to the bottom of the hole. Well, that's how it was when we took it all apart. It was sitting closer to the bottom, so the timing is spot on. And I'm happy, so all the pins can come out now. And uh, make sure the tension is still in the correct place. Yeah. Oh Again, it's not, it doesn't need to be mega tight. You, you, you can look up all the talk, tightening talks on the Google for the older, for the water pump, for the tensioner, for the idler and the okay. crank pulley as well cam pulley we didn't undo because crank pulley. yeah crank pulley needs to be talked up properly but obviously we'll have a new bolt in at the moment we're, we're using the old bolts just to turn the engine over and over and over so now the timing is done let's start with putting the crankshaft position sensor back on because the cover sits over the top of it so let's pop that back on That's the bottom crank crankshaft position on. Now the bottom cover. Well, before we put the bottom cover on, we do need to put that center engine mount on. As I said, like if you put the cover on, then you'll have to feed that underneath. So it's much easier to put that on first. Obviously all this wire sitting above it. It sits on the dowels, so it's uh, you can't get them wrong really. This engine mount, that's it. See, it just slots on the dowels. Four bolts, I'm not going to do them up yet properly. I'll just pop them in and just nick a bit in case if we need to wiggle this uh, mount a bit for the covers, for the plastic cover. Once the covers in, are in, then we'll do the tighten, tightening afterwards. All right. Right, now we'll do the bottom cover.
that's the recess where the camshaft position seems to sit and you can see that it goes over the top of it so it's easier to put the crank sensor on you can put it on with the cover on because if you change the crank sensor you don't take the cover off obviously but you have to feed it underneath and wiggle it with it so it's easier to put it on first a bit cleaner Right, the cover is on ish, you just need to do it up again. Seven mil bolts. Stem on. Might as well put the top cover on now. Being a bit of a pickle. That's it. Yeah, you can see the bottom ones are actually self tapless so they go into plastic, so you cannot overdo them. You know, you must not. They're literally just nipped up. Otherwise, you'll just shred the, the, the holes in the, in the plastic rocker cover. Cover on. Right, I'm going to try to plug this wires back in. Okay, well, we'll put the cover on. I'll clip that bracket back in. I plug that plug back in. I can put this little Torx 30 back in as well now. If I can find it. There it is. It's one of them. Right, next I can do that bracket up now, then four bolts on this bracket. Right, that's four bolts. Now I could put the back in as well I need to put the bottom crank pulley back on now with using new bolt right now we can do the crank pulley we've got a new bolt but I'll have to take the old one out it's only finger tight but it's quicker for the gun there we go in the bin obviously crank pulley can only go on one way you've got a little slot up here they should go with a little slot up there and that's it that's the only way you can go in crank pulley on next we can put the tensioner on this is the one I prepared earlier Let's jack the engine up a bit. Easier for me to get to. Right, three bolts in. shorter socket for that and let's do them up now 
I think I might use the ratchet now. So I like to hold the socket. Right. Um, can I make an appointment? Sure. I need to have time, sorry. <laughs> That's three. That's it. Yeah, we've got new tension that is on, but we've got new belt now. Again, made by the same company, Gates. So, it's uh, basically our wee brand. Um, yeah. Pop that on. And while I'm at it, I need to attach the lead that goes to the crank sensor. I need to go into that front uh, lower engine plastic cover, you know, the belt cover. So I need to pop it back in so it doesn't rattle about. Let's pop that in first. That's in. Now the belt. That sits nicely and snugly. So all I need to do now is release that tensioner. Fit in the spanner, open-ended spanner, literally pull it back, pull the pin out, and that's it. Simple as that. So the belt is on. So now, while I'm at it, Let's pop this cover back on, onto the crank pulley. It's only a dust cover, where it protects the crank sensor, that pickup ring, the non-magnetic ring, so it stops all the dust from going onto it. <laughs> so obviously, it's quite an important one. Right, that's in, that's in, that's in. So the bottom end is all done. That means that we can put the wheel arch back in now because we don't need any longer the access to this part of the engine. Wheel arch back in. Right, that's in. We've got them clips. Put it in, obviously it's a lot easier. You literally just push them in the hole and push it, that's it. Look at the four of them torques. 30 bolts. Again, don't over tighten them, they're still going in the plastic. couple of them from underneath. One, two, that's it. Right, that's all, all the plastic clips in, so that's a wheel arch back in. Next job, let's pop the engine mount back on. not ripped so it seems to be okay condition so pop the nuts on just loosely for now right let's drop the engine down a bit because it's a bit sitting just a little bit too high Fifteen mil bolt. 
one that is awful to get to sometimes on them mounts you can see the prints of the old where the bolt used to sit and you can see they're not lining up slightly so all you need to do is just pull the hinge in the back a bit so it's more or less in the right position I know I'm maybe a, trying to be a bit anal but it's nice when the engine goes exactly in the same position where it come off from on. I just need two 18 mil nuts. Now we can drop the jack. And it's out. And now we can position this water tank back on. Obviously putting it on much easier than taking it off. You just position it in the right place and push it down. And that's it, that's in. That can go back in now. It cl clips into here and goes around the washer pump cap. And it just clips in. Don't forget to clip all them fuel pipes back in also. Go on them rattling about. sitting that's clipped in retrieve our brake fluid reservoir I can go back in as well mm. so it talks 25 little screws so I said it don't need to be done up super tight either and now I just need to refill with the coolant but we still need to do the service so that means we have to take the air filter out oil filter off drain the oil change the fuel filter so it's still got plenty to do but the cam belt itself is done all right just top up with the antifreeze this is already mixed up Get concentrated antifreeze, 50-50 antifreeze to water. And then you've got a bleed screw just there. Just there on the thermostat housing. And you just un unscrew that. I already bled it, but that's how you do it. And you can see the coolant coming out. Air escapes first, obviously, and then coolant starts coming out and then do it up it's only finger tight as well no need for any special tools or anything unless it's really tough to undo so you can use some grips to undo but don't do it up with grips just fingers and then um, obviously we'll have to start once we've done the whole change and uh, warm it up to the temperature make sure it's all the air bubbles escape oh. So now you can see the engine is running, sweet, no issues that I can see you at the moment. And uh, obviously, we'll let it warm up to the temperature and then re bleed it. I'll leave the cap off for, for a minute, let it warm up with the cap off. So if there's any air bubbles, they'll just escape themselves easy. And um, that's it. And that's how you do the cam belt. And thanks for watching. Please subscribe and uh, follow us, like the video or comment. And um, yeah, thank you. See you later.